I have been looking forward to reviewing this car for over six months. Hi guys, Eric here and welcome back to my channel. Today we will be having a look at this brand new Renault Kygo 1 litre turbo Zing. It is a good car, a very good car. Permit me to explain why. I would like to take this time to give a massive thank you to the awesome staff at Sterling Renault. They have a humongous range of different vehicles and they are open for business. They are located on Mitchell Street in Hermanus, so be sure to check them out. A link to their website will be in the description box below. If you live in the Western Cape and you have an original car in good condition you would like me to review, please get in touch. There's an email address in the description box below. I remember reading the news that said the new Sandero will not be coming to South Africa. I was devastated. Until I saw what will be coming here instead. The Kaiga is a joint venture with Nissan. It is essentially the same car as the equally impressive Nissan Magnite, but with a different body and different spec. I think it looks absolutely amazing. This is my personal favourite car in its segment when it comes to its exterior. From the front, it looks hyper modern. The top of the range intense model gets all LED headlights, but even with these halogen units, it still looks as crisp as freshly plucked lettuce. It looks just as good from the back. Where the Magnite is full of edgy cuts and creases, the Kygo boasts elegant and muscular curves. It looks much bigger than it actually is. This is because of the elongated rear light cluster and the extended rear haunches. My favourite angle has to be the rear three quarters, while the profile is a bit more conventional. Even though the diamond cut 16 inch alloy wheels are reserved for the top spec model, these regular alloy wheels aren't something to scuff at either. Renault did an excellent job regardless of designing a modern and attractive little SUV that is perfect for the youth and older generations alike. When it comes to engines, you have a choice of either a naturally aspirated or turbocharged 1 litre 3 cylinder unit. This particular car has the latter. It returns 74 kilowatts and 160 newton meters of torque. Considering its small stature, those are some healthy numbers. The naturally aspirated engine will be out of breath frequently though, as it only returns 52 kilowatts and less than 100 newton meters of torque. That being said, it will be just enough to travel around town. Is the interior as impressive as the exterior though? Well, I can tell you one thing. Other manufacturers have no more excuses for their car's bland interiors. Even though this car you are looking at right now is only 250,000 Rand, this interior looks much more upmarket and funky. It is truly amazing what the designers at Renault achieved with the Kyger's interior. It looks modern and attractive and solid, much like its exterior actually. This particular model has bronze accent trim, which does a decent job of lifting the cabin a bit and breaking all the black. Renault India used cunning ingenuity though when it comes to this car's design and execution. It's all about the different textures in this car. The top of the dashboard might be flat, but it is the only trim piece in here that is. Look down and you're inundated with swoops and curves and undulations. The center control stack is a prime example of this. It is full to the brim with angles and different depths and storage trays. I love it. It all starts with the infotainment screen that sits like a tablet on top. It's not really my personal favourite design choice, but it looks neat enough. Below the infotainment screen, you will find the centre climate vents that really looks like a smile to me. Below the air vents are a row of toggle switches that houses the hazards button, eco mode, door lock, unlock, as well as ESP, the latter of which being as standard on the turbo models. 
<laughs> Move your gaze downwards still and you're greeted with the climate control panel. It looks really solid and attractive. It is very clearly labelled and it's intuitive to use. I just wish that operating it felt as upmarket. However, this car is really inexpensive, so I'm not too disappointed. This isn't the best part of the cabin though. That comes in the form of the attention to detail in a car with 250,000 rand. Take for instance this lovely pattern on one of the storage trays, this lovely silver rim around the engine start stop button, and this chunky C-shaped trim piece found at the bottom of the center control stack that is finished in piano black plastics. It's really impressive. It must be said though, while the cabin really looks upmarket, that doesn't necessarily translate into feeling upmarket. Build quality is really good, but all the plastics in here are of the cheap and scratchy variety. Now before I pitch this car too much room, let's take a closer look, starting with the door panel. Well, it looks great in my opinion, if a bit dark. There are very little shiny pieces on here, so it can look a tad gloomy. Thankfully, there is the C-shaped copper strip that does a decent job of lifting the door a bit. That isn't the only funky trim though. Instead of plain unpainted black plastics, the door handle is finished in piano black. I really like how it looks unique and different, I just don't know how long it's going to last before it's all scratched up. The door's grab handle feels solid and chunky and you get decently sized door pockets. You even get this textured plastic piece to liven things up a bit even more. The only downsides are that the armrest isn't padded at all, so I would place something soft and yielding there instead. Also, the doors don't feel particularly heavy, and they close with quite a hollow thud. The steering wheel follows the theme of the rest of the cabin by looking really upmarket. There are acres of piano black plastics and this beautiful shiny rim around the Renault logo. You even get audio controls as standard. No cruise control though, and the rim isn't wrapped in leather like that in the Nissan Magnite. The stalks provide good dampening and they are extremely easy to understand. The only important omission in my opinion is lack of reach adjustment in the steering wheel. This makes it quite tricky to find a comfortable driving position. The dials look absolutely bonkers. The top of the range Intense model receives full digital dials with a crisp display, while this Zen model makes do with Tron looking analog rev counter, temperature gauge as well as fuel gauge, with a monocolor LCD drives information display that communicates a digital speedometer as well as trip information. It does take some getting used to, but I applaud Renault for trying something different. The infotainment system's graphics is decent, if just a little bit pixelated. It does pack a decent punch though when it comes to its equipment. Wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, Bluetooth audio as well as a USB input. It is really responsive to my touch and loading times are kept to a minimum. I wouldn't call it the best infotainment system in its segment though, that honor must go to the Germans and the South Koreans. These seats look excellent for a car at this price point. There isn't a leather option and the outer fabric does feel just a bit rough, but the innards are extremely soft, supple and comfortable and the design is reminiscent of the Renault logo. I personally love Easter eggs like that. The driver's seat is adjustable for height, which makes finding a comfortable driving position so much easier. With the design out of the way, let's talk practicality. The Kyger storage solutions are excellent, just fantastic. The undampened glove box is of a very good size. You get a secondary closable storage space above said glove box, two storage trays in front of the gear lever, decently sized door pockets, and a simply colossal space underneath the center armrest. 
No cup holders though, which I find rather perplexing. It is a very important and basic amenity in cars. Get in the back and things are alright. Knee room is very good, but taller people might struggle a bit for headroom. What is very impressive is its amenities. Decently sized rear door pockets, storage pockets behind each front seat, your very own centre armrest with two admittedly shallow cup holders, as well as your own rear air vents. Not bad. What isn't that great is rear visibility. The window line sits really high and the front seat takes up a lot of forward vision, so it might not be perfect for kids. The boot is a very decent size of 405 litres, very big for its segment. You also get two grocery hooks. No tethering hooks or 12 volt socket though. The rear seats fold completely flat in a 60-40 split. Sadly though, this does result in quite a big ridge that hinders through loading. Also, the boot lip is rather high, making lifting heavy things over it quite a challenge. Thankfully, you do get a full-size spare wheel, and the opening of the boot is a nice, usable square space. Driving the Renault Kaiga around town is really easy. All the controls are nice and light, and the brakes feel progressive without feeling too grabby. You even get a high driving position, which is something a lot of people care about, for whatever reason. The 1 litre turbocharged engine feels really punchy, making the Kaiga feel peppy and alive. Even the suspension is soft and comfortable. The only downsides are rearward visibility. Thankfully, in the Zen model at least, you get a reversing camera along with rear park distance control, making things much easier. Out on the twisties and there is a definite trade-off for the aforementioned comfortable suspension. Lots of body roll. You can really feel the Kaiga shifting its weight as you go around corners. The steering is also quite devoid of feel and doesn't really send back a lot of feedback. Thankfully, there is a good amount of grip even with the thin tyres, so it never feels unsafe, but a mountain pass stormer, this car is not. Out on the open road and the Kaiga performs very well for a car in its segment. The ride remains really soft and pliant, and the engine is more than strong enough to keep up with traffic. The gearing is also excellent. Even though this is only a 5-speed gearbox, the engine turns at only 2750 rpm at our national speed limit. Now when it comes to noise suppression, there is some tyre roll, wind noise and road noise present, but it isn't too intrusive. It won't be too much of a problem either, as the Kaiga will be mostly driven in and around town. Moving to some of the Kaiga's rivals, you are truly spoiled for choice. Maybe too much choice. There is the very similar Nissan Magnite that has the same engine and chassis. It is slightly less practical but has more standard equipment. Then there is the Kia Sonnet, very well built cabin and suitable attractive styling. It has a naturally aspirated 1.5 litre engine though, which lacks the low end torque you get from the Kaiga's turbo. Other rivals include the Hyundai Venue, which is much more expensive but comes with a 7 year warranty and a dual clutch transmission, and Toyota Urban Cruiser, its literal twin, the Suzuki Vitara Brezza, and the VW T Cross. Do yourself a favour though and test drive all of them. This segment oddly does not consist of similar quality vehicles and similar value for money. The Kaiga is excellent value for money, making it one of my favourite cars I've ever reviewed. It isn't perfect, but no car is. There are some rough edges present, but the designers at Renault made it so that you won't notice it too often.
It is really attractive and it is extraordinarily practical. Well done, Reno. Thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. If you enjoyed it, please remember to like the review as it makes the world of difference to my channel. If you haven't already, remember to subscribe to my channel and get notified of upcoming reviews. I have loads more coming up for you guys, so stay tuned. If you are interested in some behind the scenes footage and a peek into my personal life, be sure to follow me on my social media platforms. Links are in the description box below. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Until next time, bye.